All right, so to start off, um, today we're with Keandre Jones. He is an NFL prospect, went to OSU for three years, and transferred to Maryland for his last year. So thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So we'll get started. With the first question we have is, when you transitioned from high school to college, what was the one thing you knew that you needed to work on in order to be the best that you could be in college? And explain a little bit about that. Yeah, I think the one thing transferring, uh, transitioning to uh, college was basically my time manage management because uh, the schedule in high school was like, you know, it wasn't really, I didn't really have a routine. So I had to, once I got to college, I had to actually, you know, make a schedule, well, make sure I had a routine, you know, whether that was making sure I was up, you know, a little bit earlier before workouts or making sure I was eating on time. So I would say uh, just time management and making sure, you know, I got stuff that I needed to get done, like uh, homework and stuff and, extra whatever activities I did outside of football too. Nice. Yeah, I know definitely like once you get to college, like all levels are heightened. So I know it's super important. Um, the next one is who is that one person that motivated you to stick with your sport when things got tough and what did they say to push you? I would say I'm really driven on family. My family is uh, important. I would say it's not just, just one person. Um, I'm really motivated by just, you know, having my family there as a support, as support system and even my teammates. I think those are the, the guys that uh, are in the locker room that are going through the same stuff that you're going through. You know, me being a, a freshman uh, or just me just being on uh, Ohio State, it was, uh, it was easy because I knew other guys were going through the same things that I was going through. So that's a, that was a big uh, a part of uh, keeping me going and, uh, Awesome. Um, the next one is, what is the one piece of advice that a coach gave you, and who was that coach? There's one piece of advice that a coach gave me. Like the best advice that they ever gave you. The best advice I got from a coach, just knowing, you know, knowing who I am, being confident in, you know, who I am as a person, and uh, that confidence goes goes a lot, a long way, because uh, once you're confident and you know you can do something, I mean, nobody can stop you, whether that's on the field, or uh, in the classroom or, you know, like I said, uh, just being confident in your abilities and your talents. Awesome. And did you, I don't know, like, if you had, like, a mentor or someone that while you were in college that, like, pushed you or, like, that you relied on that, like, continued to make you better? Yeah, I had a mentor. Um, I would say the academic staff. Uh, it was, like, three, like, three or four. I don't want to miss anybody's name. So, uh, like, I had, like, three or four mentors back in uh, Ohio State. Um, and like I said, it was more so on the academic side because uh, these people seen us, you know, after practice or uh, before practice and, you know, during tutoring sessions. And uh, I would say, yeah, the academic staff really helped a lot. Awesome. Uh, the next one is what's the biggest obstacle that you've had to overcome as a college athlete and how did you overcome it? I think being away from home for me because I'm orig originally from Maryland. Uh, going away from home like I think I was like six hours away and uh just being you know not having my family there and having to get adjusted to a new city a new area um that was that was challenging I know my freshman year kind of but um also uh I guess the stuff that you face like everyone's going to deal with a death in the family or you know some type of tra tragic event is going to happen you know, as you keep being older. So uh, I think I think that was a, a obstacle that I overcame. I was able to come back to the University of Maryland and to be close to home with my family during that time when we did have uh, somebody pass away in my family. So, uh, yeah, I think that was uh, something that I overcame and uh, was able to be close to my, you know, back home. Awesome. And I know, like, having family as your support is a huge thing for any athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, the next one that we have is being that you were a team captain at the University of Maryland, what are three characteristics that an athlete needs to be a good leader? I think uh, instead of t talking about it, lead by example, mm -hmm. uh, your actions. Um, like I said, going back to having that confidence, uh, once, you know, somebody sees that, you know, that you're confident, then they're going to lead right behind you and they're going to follow you because they know that, you know, you're sure about everything that you're doing, so you just make them more comfortable, make them feel more safe. And then, uh, what's another one? Um, just being vocal, 
too. I mean, I, I put that last because, like I said, I want to lead by example first. And um, I know a lot of times when I'm out there on the football field, uh, we have to communicate a lot just to, you know, get certain plays and stuff. So being a vocal leader, too, is good, too. Nice. Yeah, I know, like, being – like, leading by example and, like, really, like, putting your head down and working is something that I definitely look for in a leader. So that's awesome that you were able to do that. Um, and also this kind of like relates to the other one is captains have different techniques and the way they lead. How do you motivate your team daily? Um, yeah, this goes back to my actions. Uh, I try when I transferred into Maryland, I tried to just, you know, like you said, to put my head down and work and, um, gradually throughout the season, you know, guys start to, you know, come along and look to me for advice or look for me, look to me for, you know, help and stuff. So. Um, my actions. Awesome. And you obviously, like, you had the experience, so guys are going to look up to you regardless, so that's awesome. Yeah. Um, these ones are a little more directed towards recruits, so that's what these ones are going to be about. Um, sure. What two training techniques should athletes never forget to have in their regimen, the two most important ones? And I guess that would be, like, stretching, like, doing your rehab, like, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I'm – I think it's important to have a good diet dieting uh, system because <laughs> uh, once once I got to college, I didn't I was eating whatever I wanted. Like before that, I was eating whatever. <laughs> but you, to to actually like to have energy and stuff, you might want to you know just slow down like the going out eating out all the time and uh, watch what you're eating. And then um, I would say sleeping. Sleeping mm -hmm. is important. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, if you could go back in time, what would you change in your recruiting process and why? Honestly, I wouldn't change anything. Uh, everything happens for a reason. Uh, everything made uh, made me uh, who I was. Um, everyone, everyone has their own journey. So, um, like I said, uh, it's going to shape you and mold you into the, you know, the person that you, you're going to become after college or, you know, during that time. You're going to go through stuff and uh, just think, Stick it, stick it out and, you know, find somebody to gravitate towards, um, whether that's a mentor or a teammate. And, um, yeah. Nice. And I think, like, if you're going through the recruiting process, you shouldn't be regretting anything as long as you're making, like, the right steps. So that's exactly. awesome. That's awesome that you felt that way. Um, this is kind of a tough one because you don't want to, like, hurt your parents' feelings or anything. But at times, parents can be a little bit overwhelming during the recruiting process. Mm -hmm. and you don't want them to be too involved so like in your situation were your parents super involved and like how would you go with giving advice to any parents that are kind of going through the recruiting process with their kids yeah personally uh I knew I put in the work I knew I knew like my mom wasn't out there running with me you know all I have is a single mother so <laughs> my mom wasn't out there running with me she doesn't she doesn't know how much you know I know she knows how hard I work but uh at the end of the day it was gonna be my decision you know I feel like it should be left up to the, you know, the recruit or the, you know, the kid that's committed to their school um, and not, and not the parents, because at the end of the day, this is, this is our life. But I think it's really important to let the, let the, the kid make the decision and kind of like as parents fall back a little bit, because I know like from personal experience, I didn't let my mom dictate <laughs> where I was going to where I was gonna play football, where I, where I was going to get my education. Awesome. Yeah, I totally agree with that, too. I think, like, at the end of the day, like, you're the one putting in the work, you're the one on the field. So I totally agree with that. Yeah. The next one is, should football players be open to playing different positions when looking to play college football? Or do you feel they should push to play their position? I think football players should definitely um, be able to play whatever, you know, whatever they can. Um, I know for me, I was able to play multiple positions and, you know, Build, keep building up my resume for, you know, this this draft. And now that, you know, teams are interviewing me and they're asking me, you know, can I do this, can I do that? And I've been exposed to playing multiple positions, which makes it easier for me to come on the team and uh, get, a, get a spot. Awesome. Um, the next one is, how can the players who are not top recruits get on the coach's radar? Oh, um, my – it's a, it's unfortunate, but a lot of kids will get you know passed and and look looked over. But um, with the hard work, all you need is one school to believe in you. All you need is one one team, one school to take that chance. And it's just like for my situation, all all I need is one 
one team to pick me. You know, I don't need to be recruited by 50 plus schools because I can only choose one <laughs> at the end of the day. So um, really just for hard work and uh, making sure you're doing everything you need to do academically to be eligible. And um, yeah, just 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 stick through, stick it out and, you know, try as hard as you can to just have one team to believe in. Yeah, that's perfect. I think a lot of recruits like feel that, oh, I'm not like top 50 or like top 100. So definitely like yeah. knowing that kind of you are going through the same thing right now is for sure reassuring for them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, it's, it's cool to get recruited by every school in the country, but it's a lot of pressure. You still, right. <laughs> you don't need that. You don't need it. Right. It's not important. Um, your, the next one is social media is a huge part of everyone's lives nowadays. So how can athletes use social media to their advantage when getting recruited? Um, I guess the typical, you know, post your workouts, do whatever you have to do to sell yourself, your brand. Uh, cause by the time you get, you know, to college, you know, the NCAA controls most of what, <laughs> what we do. So, uh, <laughs> that's a, that's, a, that might be a little tough question because like I said, the NCAA controls so much and we can't, we're limited to what we can do once we get to that college, you know, mm -hmm. somewhat, but, uh, like I said, uh, post your workout videos, bring yourself as much as possible um, just to get your name, keep getting your name out there. Awesome. Um, and then these last four, these are going to be like more fun questions for you. Mm -hmm. So the first one is, what is the craziest thing you've seen a parent do during a game? Craziest? Honestly, I'm not even paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even paying attention to, to, uh, to the, you know, parents or the fans or whatever in the stands I'm so locked into what I need to do I don't even hear the crowd or anything so I can't I couldn't even that's, tell you yeah that's what you should be doing so that's perfect yeah um what is your go-to meal before a game go-to meal before a game uh now that I have my own you know I'm out of college we had team meals and stuff I would say uh I probably shouldn't, but um, I like pizza. I like pizza. I'll probably eat. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'll be having my little mood swings. So I might switch it up. I'll be, I'll be switching it up. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. um, the next one is, what is your go-to pump-up song before a game for, like, a certain artist that you listen to? My go-to pump-up song. Any music that can get me, like, just, like, hype and, like, dancing. Like, I love to dance before, the, before, <laughs> before I go on the field, so I need something to dance to. <laughs> I'm the same way too, so that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and the last one is: Would you rather wear a suit or a sweatsuit before a game? I like to be comfortable, so sweatsuit. Awesome. Same here. Well, those are all the questions I had for you, and honestly, like all your answers were perfect in your responses. So I know that any student athlete that's going to watch this, that's in high school, is going to be super comfortable, like knowing that you've gone through the same thing. So they're going to have questions, and these answered all of them. So thank you so much, and I know we're. All at LRT, super excited for you and your NFL draft prospects. So we'll be praying for you. Um, but, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you again. I appreciate you having me. No problem.